I'd like to call the open session of the Long Beach Community College District Board of Trustees to order. This is the meeting of Tuesday, February 23rd. Welcome everyone, uh, Democracy in Action, we're delighted to have you here. Um, we just completed a closed session and the board took an action in closed session to not renew the probationary faculty contract of employee number 0770245. Um, I'm gonna ask Trustee Zia to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. Madam Secretary, could we have the roll call? Irma Archuleta. Here. Virginia Baxter. Here. Jeff Kellogg. Here. Doug Otto. Here. And Sunny Zia. Here. And student trustee Alejandro Lomelli. Here. Great, thank you. I'm going to uh, ask for an approval of the minutes of the January 26, 2016 regular board meeting, meeting of the Board of Trustees. So moved. So, so moved by Trustee Zia, seconded by Trustee Archuleta. Uh, roll call vote. To One moment, please. There, we had to wait for it to catch up. Okay, Zia and Archuleta, is that correct? Yes. The motion, okay. And we have Irma Archuleta. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. And Sunny Zia? Aye. And uh, carries unanimously. Uh, agenda item 2.6, introductions and special announcements. Superintendent President Oakley. Uh, I only have uh, one introduction, and um, uh, although many of you know uh, we had a new addition to the LBCC family recently, I just want to officially introduce since he's here, uh, Mr. Miles Nevin, uh, who just uh, joined Long Beach City College and uh, will be hanging out at a lot of board meetings in the future. So welcome, Miles. I, I, I presume he gets compad pay for those times with the, before the board. So, uh, Any reordering of the agenda? Hearing none, ASB report, President's report, please. Good evening, Superintendent President Oakley, Board President Otto, and members of the board. First and foremost, I would like to take some time to recognize two student leaders that are here this evening who are in our leadership programs. Ravana Contral is the president of a new club on campus called Queer Space. She is also part of the President's Ambassadors Program and a student assistant in the Student Life Office. She has recently just completed her internship in the, mayor's, the mayor of Long Beach's office and now has been named the Youth Grand Marshal at the upcoming Long Beach Pride Parade. The second student that I would like to recognize is David Sines. He is a member of the AGS Honor Society and an active member in our LAC Cultural Affairs Council. David is currently working with the former mayor of the city of Downey in order to pilot an internship program within that community. These are just two examples of the impact that our student leaders have in their respective community and demonstrates LBCC's ability to prepare its students for their future. The ASB cabinet is also pleased to announce the addition of two cabinet members on important college committees this semester. Both the Student Equity Committee and the Curriculum Committee have student representation this semester through Catherine Bastinza and Elizabeth Palafox. This past week was a great and busy, busy start to the semester as ASB co-hosted a Welcome Back barbecue. We would like to thank Vice President Gable and board member Dr. Baxter for taking time out of their busy day to help pass out lunch at the LAC campus. The cabinet is working in full force, chairing a variety of committees this semester themselves to plan efforts um, from the Legislative Committee, the Constitution Committee, Marketing Committee, Spring Sing, Mini Grand Prix, and AS elections. There's so much more. Thank you all for your time. Great, thank you. Uh, public comments on agenda items. <clears throat> we have 11 people who want to talk on one agenda item. We, uh, in our we, we ordinarily allow three minutes, but if there's a, 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 
an excessive number of people, we have the discretion to cut that. And so what I'm going to do is ask so that everybody can speak within the 20 minutes that is allocated for each agenda item that you speak for two minutes, if you will, please. Uh, and we have eight, uh, uh, 11 people on uh, 8.1, which has to do with the bond, uh, the bond resolution. So uh, we'll go in alphabetical order. Our first one is Dalzil Arambula. <clears throat> you look familiar. <laughs> Hello again. Um, as a student here at Long Beach City College for the past four years, I have seen the college go through a transformation from the landscape through the faculty and through the students. I personally support the bond measure but going forward because it does impact the way that our students learn and it prepares us for the future. Thank you. Uh, Elaine McDaniel. Excuse me. Elaine McDaniel. Good evening. I'm here to ask you to approve the resolution number 022316A, which will authorize the LA County um, Registrar Recorder County Clerk to include the bond issue from this district uh, in the June 7th election. And it's really important, you know, I was here not too long ago showing you what the previous bond money went for and what a difference it's making on the campus and for the students here. And I also want to point out that this college is going to be 90 years old next year. Now, you know, when a woman gets to be 90, she needs a little uplift. So. <laughs> So I'm encouraging you to approve this bond measure so that we can do that for the college. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Number three, John Philpa. Dr. John Philpa. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Philpa. I was born and raised in Long Beach and a proud graduate of this institution. I also enjoyed a 40-year career with the Long Beach Unified School District and, and also Long Beach Community College District. Uh, board President Otto, members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to speak on uh, resolution on uh, item number 8.1. Uh, I think going forward with the bond will have many positive impacts on students of Long Beach City College as well as their community. As a former dean of students and later on as a dean of academics, I was privileged to participate in previous bond acts and the impact was evident. In terms of students, um, the improved educational environment changed attitudes. Students were and continued to be proud of the refreshed surroundings. Increased technology improved the educational experience for students, faculty, and staff. Uh, with the assistance of the of Office of Institutional Research, I conducted a longitudinal study on how um, this affected student athletes in particular. And in every instance, the student rates uh, student, student athletes excelled in the areas of GPA, persistence, retention, graduation rates, and transfer. Continuing this positive impact on student athletes in particular and the general student population with improved facilities will include that trend. I refer to this study because I improving uh, facilities in kinesiology and athletics areas is one specific example of improving student success. And obviously the facilities need upgrading. In terms of the community at large, improving facilities will reap great rewards, and I'm confident that the athletic community in particular will support this bond. I'm part of a group of over 300 men and women who make up the Long Beach Century Club. That's one such group. This nonprofit is dedicated to improving athletic facilities in the city of Long Beach. And over the past year, the Century Club has provided over $150,000 in support to our local programs. Just three weeks. Please turn the mic back on. Thank you. I'm, I'm just about finished. A $10,000 check to Long Beach City College to support academic scholarships for student athletes and support the fine efforts of the Student Athlete Success Center. The past two years, that total has been $30,000. This group also understands the improved facilities will positively impact all citizens. There's an enormous need for improved as well as additional fields, courts, and water space in Long Beach. The beauty of these upgrades will be an, an improved opportunity to permit the space, which will help with ongoing costs. There are thousands of us in the community who hope you move forward. Uh, the continued upgrading of infrastructure is critical. The impact on the community will be positive. The impact on academic success uh, 
for students will become a direct result, and specifically the continued positive impact on student athletes will reap great rewards for both the individuals and the college. Let me just conclude by saying thank you to the board and the administration for having the foresight to understand that a great community college remains great that way by continually looking at improvements in its programs, its results, and its facilities. The citizens of Long Beach will respect that vision and the passing of the bond will serve as a testament to your foresight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rich Foster. Pleasure to speak before the, the board here. I haven't been here, uh, even though I was a student here in 1969, 1971. I am a Viking. My daughter's a Viking. Uh, she was part of the uh, honors program here a few years ago and graduated from UCLA afterwards. Um, I'm an attorney in private practice. I've also been involved heavily in swimming and water polo at the international level, and I'm uh, an instructor at Long Beach State in a master's program over there. I'm speaking to encourage you to move this bond measure forward because enhanced facilities are going to attract better students, better coaches, better professors, better administrators, even though I think um, um, my experience here was fantastic. I think that came out a little bit wrong. I wasn't uh, complaining about the present ones. Um, uh, and I, if you think about it, what attracts people to a community college? It's the instructors, it's the facilities, it's the administrators, the programs, and coaches. And I'll give you one personal ex uh, example for me. I came here in 1969 because we had the best water polo coach in the country, if not the world, Monty Nitzkowski. We have a similar coach to the same um, level in Chris Oding at the present time. Um, the facility when I came here, the, the, water, the, the swimming pool was fine for me because it's, it's very short and I wasn't that fast and so it really optimized my game. But today's players are much bigger, they're faster, the facility's not optimal and I think if we improve facilities, I'm just giving the pools an example, um, it, will, it will be very attractive to the community, um, future professors, future coaches, future athletes. Thank you. Thank you. Rich Fors, did I pronounce that right? Rich, F-O-R-S. Oh, sorry. Actually, I think you misspelled your name. <laughs> exactly. I'm still learning that one, sir. <laughs> good, good evening, uh, uh, board, uh, trustees. My name is uh, Rick Foss. I'm a business representative for sheet metal workers of Southern California, which covers seven Southern California counties, which is LA, Orange, San Bernardino, Riverside, and then up north is Carnino and Mono. I'm the South Bay business representative, and I conduct a lot of activity and business down in Long Beach with the city, with the port, with the uh, community college in the district. Uh, we've had a lot of your new construction over the last six years. I've been on this campus and the other campus here for LBCC uh, with a lot of our contractors and our members who actually work on site. And I'm gonna say, I'm here today and asking you, not because the members I represent, the 6,000 members, but the several hundred that live in the city of Long Beach, to support this bond measure. And I'll tell you why it needs to be supported. One is, is because need to continue the growth that you have going on on campus here. I was fortunate enough to attend the State of the City Union speech uh, by Mr. Dr. Robert Garcia, the mayor. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with LBCC. They have one year of free college for every student graduating from Long Beach Unified School District. You need to build because it's gonna get overwhelmingly busy in the next few years. But if I can finish up and close by saying I do support this and on behalf of the sheet metal workers, I'm also a delegate to the building trades. If you will consider moving forward with this bond measure, I ask that you please consider looking at a project labor agreement moving forward. We have one with the port, or getting one with the port. We have one with the city of Long Beach. And they're very productive for on time and under budget. And I gotta say one last thing. Some of the contractors that come in here, if they're held accountable, they pay the people proper, they pay the proper rates, it's a good thing. We have a labor compliance department who has filed with the state of California on multiple occasions, not only on this campus, but in the cities and other cities. Where they're not doing the right thing. I'm going to finish my Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Dr. Lee Douglas. Thank you for the upgrade. Oh, that's my fault. It's my fault. No problem. <laughs> I would just like to add my voice to those that have spoken tonight on behalf of the bond measure. I have the unique perspective having served on the Facilities Advisory Committee as a Facility Advisory Co-Chair for six years, the, the desperate need that we have on campus for upgrade of our buildings and our classrooms. Many of the, as you know, many of our buildings were built in the 1950s and are, and are deteriorating. Classrooms are outdated and require improvements in order to support the student needs of today. This measure will address critical repair needs such as meeting earthquake safety requirements, handicap accessibility, and fixing plumbing and leaking roofs. As a matter of fact, just experienced one last week in the, in the M building, which affected our foreign language lab. This bond measure will make our campus clean and safe for teaching and learning. And I'd like to conclude with saying this. Our faculty deserve this, and more importantly, our students deserve this. Thank you. Thank you. Keith Harkey. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Keith Harkey. I'm a Long Beach native. And I'm also here to support, uh, or to represent the Iron Workers of Local 433. Um, we represent uh, many families here in Long Beach. They're your friends, your neighbors. They're hardworking men and women. Uh, many of them have attended Long Beach Community College District, or come through this classes. And many of their students, many of their children now are now coming through the same classes that they attended. Uh, we're here to support this bond measure. The district needs to continue the bond. They've had bond measures before. We've seen the upgrades. We've seen how well it works for the, for the school. And now it's time to finish the job. It's time to invest again in Long Beach. The good news is there's a lot of demand for Long Beach community classes. It's a high quality system and thousands of students have come through. The bad news is that creates more demand and we have to make space for those people. So in other words, real simple, uh, you have a chance tonight to vote for a much better solution and let's create more room for them. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, is it Nathalie Lomelli? Good evening. It's uh, pronounced Natalie. It's spelled a little differently. So my name is Natalie Lomelli. I'm a third year student here at Long Beach City College. And I would like to speak on behalf of item 8.1 and how past, bond me how past bond measures like this one have benefited me personally. Being a STEM major, I put a lot of emphasis on collaboration. Collaboration with the faculty and staff and collaboration with my peers. The V building, its study rooms, and its amenities allowed, I'd like to say, a sanctuary for me and my classmates to really grasp the, concept, uh, the complex concepts we were trying to learn. If there was anything we didn't understand, we merely had to walk less than 10 steps to the closest professor's office so they could pro provide us with some insight. If there wasn't a professor there, all we had to do was walk outside into the Math Success Center and work alongside with one of the student faculty. The V building, the v building last semester was a huge part of my success as a student, and this semester I believe it'll do the same. I believe it is a prime example of how bond measures like item 8.1 can really, can really catalyze success not only for myself, but many students here on campus. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Tabby Larson. Hello, thank you. My name is Tabby Larson. I'm an Outreach and President's Ambassador here and I'm also in the Honors Program. And I'm here to support the bond measure. Um, I just want to say that making advancements that support the entire student population rather than just helping a single group is exactly the kind of moving forward we need to be doing because that affects everyone, not just the students, but the professors. And not only do people want to study and work in nicer facilities, but I know the professors and other faculty would also like to work in nicer facilities too. 
also, this bond I kind of am phrasing is not just one step, but what I'd like to call a nice run or jog towards a goal that will benefit students for not just years, but decades to come. We are approaching 90 years old and still have usable facilities. They're just not as nice as they could be. So we will be supporting the school for years and years to come by passing this. And I, it's my last semester here, so I won't get to experience any of that, but I would love it for the future students to be able to have that opportunity also. And the V building has already proved that a new building can motivate students. Um, I have a dear friend I've known since elementary school who has struggled with ADHD and barely graduated high school. And he finally just enrolled this semester because of the V building. And he is now on the culinary arts path and enrolled because I told him there's new facilities that will work for you and work with you. And that's just one personal story. And there are many of those and that's just one person I know, but how many people do we all know? And that's just how much that one building has done already, and it just came out last semester. So with the amount that would be given, it, there would, it could just do so much more than just one building too. So I would just love to see just all of the good to come from the bond, and I am here to support it. So thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ravana Contrell. Hello, um, I'd like to speak in support of the bond measure today. I've already seen a lot of really good uh, improvements come with the V building and things like that. I took my math classes there last semester and got a lot of different support from that. So I think uh, different things like that can really help the student and help us on our way to either transferring, getting an AA or different things like that. So thank you. Thank you. And our last speaker on this subject is David Sands. David. Uh, sign, Science. I'm pretty sure you're used to murdering names. It's okay. Um, so. <laughs> I, I, I minored in that in college. Oh, really? Uh, so my name is David Sines. I'm currently part of the Honors Program, um, part of the Cultural Affairs Council, the John Philpo Leadership Institute. He's right there. That's the man right there. Um, recently, um, I actually just passed the uh, new version of the Cultural Affairs Constitution, so I'm very excited about that. And I'm pretty sure from what everybody else is saying that I can go ahead and support this bond, and the approval of this bond, because I'm all for helping students out by creating a safe and welcoming environment so that way they can go ahead and become intrinsically motivated to pursue their dreams. Um, that pretty much sums that up, so I approve, I approve this bond. <laughs> Great, thank, thank you, you very much. We, we actually had one additional speaker on this subject who just came in, and that's Sam Hurtado. Good evening, thank you for the opportunity to come before you. Um, I took a different course, I'm a sheet metal worker. I represent approximately 3,000 members. I graduated from college before I went to uh, take a trade, which my dad was in a trade. So I'm in support of the bond, first of all. Second of all, uh, after I graduated, I was on my way to law school. Uncles and uh, my sister's PhD medical research, so I was gonna follow that route. Well. It was a career change, um, unexpectedly. She stood five foot two, big green eyes, hair down to her ankles. And I said, Dad, what did you do for a living? So as a result, my wife stayed at home with my boys. My mom stayed at home with me and my sisters. It's a great opportunity to build these things because I coach high school baseball right now. And a lot of the kids don't know what they want to do. This is a great proving ground, and these types of facilities are needed for those kids to figure out what they want to do. So um, thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you, and uh, hopefully you see it our way. So thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. That concludes the speakers on agenda items 8.1. We have two speakers on agenda items 
uh, 8.2 and 8.3. 8.2 is our 2015-16 mid-year budget performance report, and 8.3 is our 2015-16 CCFS 311Q second quarterly financial status report that goes on up to Sacramento. Our first speaker on that, that, that subject or those subjects is Janae Hunt. Good evening, board and administration, and all those faculty out there in those red Educating Our Future t-shirts, as well as the staff and community uh, members present, and students, of course. I am our full-time faculty union president, uh, speaking to these two agenda items, 8.2 and 8.3. I view the current budget and I see that of the $11 million in one-time monies allocated to the college, less than $5 million has been spent. Also on the CCFS 311 for item 8.3, uh, there is more than $8 million in reserves for economic uncertainties and $1.5 million in variance for the current versus projected budget. As you know, CCA and the district remain in negotiations over salaries effective July 1st, 2015. The parties are meeting this week and have another date scheduled for next week. At this point, the parties remain pretty far apart with respect to salary. Based on the numbers I just reviewed, it appears that the district can support a fair salary increase for faculty. Allocating a significant amount of these monies to faculty and instruction would demonstrate that the district is committed to better, to do better by the very people who deliver student success and whose work generates FTES. Also, I do realize I am on the agenda, uh, the last item on the agenda, and I do thank the Board of Trustees for agendizing the constituent group presidents. However, it is very difficult for me to stay for three hours at these board meetings as not only am I a full-time faculty member, but also a mom of school-age boys. And when these meetings go so late, I miss out on our reading time together. I kindly ask that our reports are moved up earlier on the agenda. Thank you. And our, our second speaker on these same issues is Katherine Jennings. Good evening, board, administration, faculty, and students. I am Katherine Jennings, the chief negotiator for our faculty unit. And although we have been at the table since September, both sides remain very far apart on salary. We would like to ask the board to do what you can to help the district come to a reasonable agreement with faculty on this issue. And one final word, support the bond and please support the faculty. Thank you very much. That's all our comments, public comments on agenda items. We're moving on to area three of our agenda, which is presentations. And our first one is 3.1, potential 2016 Long Beach City College bond measure survey results presentation. <laughs> Superintendent President Oakley, who's gonna make that presentation? Uh, yes, I will turn it over to Anne-Marie Gable to introduce our presenters, but um, I just want to, um, again, um, uh, thank uh, the board for beginning this process. I think um, what we're here today is some very positive results from the community. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Anne-Marie Gable to introduce our speakers. Thank you, President Oakley. Uh, tonight we have John Fairbank with us. Uh, John is a principal with Fairbank, Maslin, Mullen, Metz, and Associates, better known as FM3. And they are the uh, company that did our community survey. So uh, I'll go ahead and turn it over to John for him to go through the presentation. Okay, good evening. Nice to be here. <clears throat> a great presentation. 
I'm, uh, I'm going to walk through a, a number of slides that uh, illustrate the results from your uh, public opinion survey that we conducted. Uh, the last uh, first week of December, December 6th through the 17th. And uh, I have the pleasure of presenting a number of positive results here. Uh, not only uh, the recognition of what you do here as very positive from your constituents, support for a bond, the understanding of the over-educational goals uh, and what goes on here, the, the new management, the reforms you've, you've made, you're going to see a number of very positive reactions on a number of fronts from, uh, from your voters. 